Hey everybody. <laughs> All right, back at you with another exciting video. Uh, I'm doing another rash of seven days a week and it's been raining every single day. So once again, I am relegated to doing something in the backyard with the cats. <laughs> now, I had a long time ago, I showed a, uh, a smoker that I built. And uh, it was kind of big. It takes a large Alice pack or a Molly pack to be able to carry it. And uh, I started working on a smaller backpackable version of a smoker. And uh, in a pinch, it could also be an oven. But I've never tested it. And so uh, today, I figure like it's a good day this morning. It's not raining. And uh, I have to go in second shift later. So I got up and I think I'm going to smoke some wings. <laughs> So let's dip into this thing and I'm going to set up my little table and my new smoker and talk about it a little bit. And then I'm gonna, uh, we're going to try to smoke some wings with some uh, pecan wood. <laughs> and I'll, I'll talk a little bit how I, how I do things when I'm actually on the trail, when I, how I smoke things. Because I had, like I said, I had a smoker years ago and I've still got it, but it's a little big and I'm trying something new. I'm trying a smaller version. So we're going to see how this works out. Never, it's all new, never been tested. <coughs> So this is basically it, okay? And it's it's kind of a multi-use item. I left the bag in the house that I made for it because there's just no reason to show it. So let's show how this thing is set up. I'm gonna set it up about right here. See if the camera's, yeah, that, that camera will catch it. Okay, now here's a ring. And instead of welding anything onto the, the bowl, what I did is I welded little uh, sockets onto the ring. So what you do is you take these, you slide these in, just like that. Alright. Okay, now I'm going to try to hold this. People always ask, why don't you use threaded connections? Well, everything I build is stainless steel. And when you build these things out of stainless steel, if the connections are threaded, they always seize up. Always. From heat. And you just, it just doesn't work. So you kind of spread these out a little bit. And give it a stab in the ground. All right. Now, once I get the fire going, I'm going to move out of the way. I'll give you another view of this just in, in, a, in a minute so that you can see the height of it. Now, the next thing that goes in is the bowl. This is a good heavy duty bowl with a lip around it. Now, the original intentions of this bowl was going to be, now, of course, a bowl is a bowl, is a bowl. <laughs> But what I was going to do with this thing is another use for it is you can have a fire under the bowl and you can put a small something here to support something a little bit bigger so that you can bake with it. Now this is something, this is a mixer bowl and I never did modify it, but it seals off perfectly around this lip so that it can be made into an oven. Now that's the oven part of it right there. Because it's pretty rare that you ever find two bowls that fit this perfectly together. And it's a perfect sealed fit. And that's what you want for the oven. But this, this ain't going to be an oven today, so we're not going to use that. The way we're going to use this is there's going to be a grill here. And then another bowl that just sits on top, but it's not quite as big, so there's a little bit of a space around here. Alright. Now I'm going to show you another view of this before I make the fire different view of it with the top on now where my hand is you can see where this is the bottom of the bowl I don't know how well you can see it but it's got the four legs but that's about the height that it's off the ground now I'm gonna show you a little bit closer here when you're smoking you don't want a real tight fit see this bowl there's a little bit of space because you want some of the smoke to be able to escape you want a continuous supply of smoke to be escaping while you're uh, burning off the chips and producing more smoke. Because if I used that other bowl and sealed it off, the smoke would be trapped in here and it would never escape and it wouldn't smoke. The smoking process, you want a continuous supply of smoke coming out. Now the fire is gonna be in the bottom and the chips is gonna be in here. And I'll explain more about that in a minute before we get the fire going. I'll explain about the, the, the chip part of it. Let's talk out. about the chips now. Uh, any of these chips that you buy in these bags right here, because it's a big pain to go chopping up the correct wood when you're out on the trail. So you just bring a bag of chips like this. Now, if you're going to use, if you got a big enough smoker, 
and you're going to use the whole bag of chips you can take and poke holes in this bag and tie off the top and float it in the creek overnight that way the chips will be warm because remember when you're smoking if the chips are dry they're just going to burn up in no time you have to have water in them they have to have moisture in them so that you can uh so that they'll produce a slow smoke the slower the slower hotter smoke the better off you are and if there's moisture in the chips that also produces steam which helps keep your fish or your chicken or your meat or whatever uh, kind of moist keeps from drying it out so and another thing i would do sometimes is in the past is i would take whatever chips i wanted and you put them in a mesh bag fill the bag up and float it in a creek okay another thing you can do is if you bring a container you just fill some of the chips up with water a little bit above the chips and they'll float now when all the chips sink you'll know they're ready ready to go all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to dump these chips Let's see if we can see inside here what i'm going to do now okay the wings or your meat is going to be on this grill all right so what we're going to do now is i'm going to just dump every bit of this in here now i'm not going to pour the water out first i'm going to dump this in to see how much water's in here because i want to leave a little bit of water in there oh that smells fantastic i wish you could smell like it i usually use the applewood chips but these are the pecan chips okay so what i'm going to do now is another thing is I'm going to leave a little bit of water with some of the chips exposed because it, well, as the fire starts up, it's also, like I say, is a steaming process. And the water will help transfer the heat to the chips. So I'm going to set that right there. Now let's put this on. All right, so now th this is what it looks like so far. All right. It's a bowl on a stand with the moist chips and the grill okay now what i may do i'm wondering i haven't used this yet this is a brand new setup and i'm wondering if i should pour off just a touch of that water it may be too much i'm i think I, i'm going to just pour off just a touch of this water there now I still got water in there which is good now that might have been that might have been too much right there so what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, start a fire underneath here and we're going to start pre-warming everything put this lid back on all right i have some grass here i think what i'm going to do i'm going to put two pieces of wood under here to start with Now, let's see let's just put one under here just like that and then i'll add more as needed put some of this stuff under there and let's put some more leafy grass up on top And then I'll start adding sticks as it, as it goes up. We'll put a little bit of bark on top. I'm trying to use all natural things because, I mean, I know it's, it's good to have a fire, fire starters, but I'm trying my best just to use all natural things if I can. If it doesn't work, then I'll go get the uh, cotton, Vaseline cotton balls. Now, as this burns, I'll, I'll be adding sticks. This is going to be one heck of a flame. All right, now, a friend of mine, <clears throat> let's talk about this for a minute. I got some ferro rods here. Now, a friend of mine makes these monster ferro rods. Uh, this is a, a lathe tool bed. It's got four sides, and the handles are big. It's got a bear paw uh, burn into it. Good long cord. All right. This is a big ferro rod. Now, the thing, the, the element I like about this is this being a ferro rod, it has the built-in, the built-in feature of actually being a survival tool because of the way you grip it. Now, the more I say, these stupid little bitty tiny ferro rods here, could you imagine when your hands are frozen and you don't have any dexterity 
and you're trying to strike, you're trying to hold on to these little bitty things here and trying to strike. Same thing with these. You have to hold this with two fingers to try to get a, 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 a spark. Now, could you imagine doing that when your hands, you, can, you can't even hardly touch your fingers? With this, you can use your whole hand. And you got a good spark. All right, so let's see how this thing works right here now. Get some stuff out of the water. I'm probably going to be too close to this fire. <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, it's already going. Got a good start to it. Now I'm going to start adding all these little bitty things here. Now this is just pre-warming everything. Now this is good. I don't have gigantic flames, which means it's a slow burn, which means my starting tender is not going to vanish into thin air. Putting all these small ones on here. Go ahead and put on another little piece of bark in the mix. Now, like I said, this is a brand new, untested backpacker smoker. So, I don't know how much water is going to be in there. Now, to your normal person, they would look at this and be like, oh no, you've lost your fire. Well, all you got to do is blow on it. See, I've still got flames. See, there's my flames back again. That's why I put the bark back on it, so that I could keep it going. You don't want grass too fluffed up, because if your grass is uh, kind of compacted, you've got some flames in there where you can continue blowing on it. Now, say I'm not going to blow any more because if I blow more, it's going to speed up the burning process. Now, say I've got a flame coming back. Fires are a tricky thing. There's a lot of people that they think that, uh, you know, once you got that first initial whoosh going up, that when it goes away, it goes away and you're done. But that's that not ne not necessarily so if you have your tender compact. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding all these things. Now, I think what I'm going to have to do here in a minute, I'm going to have to start preparing my um, my chicken wings. Yeah, now that's that's good enough right there. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave this alone, and I'm going to let all this start dying down. As soon as I get this wood all the way up to here. And when I start seeing smoke coming around these edges right here, I'll be good to go. Now, as you can see in the background back there, I have my fire going. Uh, the fire hasn't got a whole lot to do with smoking wings, but I showed the whole process because so many people have trouble with fire. And the way I layered the tinder, you can see the flames bursted up and then the flames went away. Most people at that point will be like, oh no, well, just keep adding, keep blowing, and then that's what happens. <laughs> so now, as the fire's going, we're going to see about pre preparing our wings. So, let's take a peek down here at this table. Need a plastic baggie, a little bit of olive oil, not much, just a little bit. You can see it's about that amount. All right, now the olive oil helps, it helps the rub stick to the wings and it also keeps kind of keeps them from drying out too fast because smoking dries them out dries them out really bad now I have in here let me hold this in my mouth I have in here let's see this is some cheap uh, Sawers barbecue 
dry rub. Let's look back here at our grill real quick. You can see I still have the flames going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to dump some of this in. Keeping an eye on that. Looking pretty good. Now by the time I get these wings on the grill, I'm going to have to put more wood on them. <clears throat> I'm initially preheating everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump some of this in here. That's plenty. All right. Whatever your favorite rub is, is fine. And I'm going to squish this around in the bag so that that olive oil is all encapsulated in that rub. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, I needed a napkin. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear this off. I got some chicken wings here and I'm going to try not to touch them. I doubt all these are going to fit, but I'm going to go ahead and put them on the grill. Put them all on the grill. Alright. Five dollars worth of chicken wings. Let's open this bag up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm really going to try not to touch these. Dump these in the bag. I'm going to have to touch them. All right, let's just dump the whole lot in the bag. All right. Close it off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squish them all around in here. Let's keep an eye on the fire. Yeah, it'll be good. By the time I get these things on, by the time I get these things on, It'll be perfect. Everything will be nice and warm. The flames will be died down enough that I can touch the lid and I can put these things on. Smoked wings. <laughs> now, I don't know how big this thing is. And in the future, I may make a dual layer grill for it. I don't know. This is a first time deal for such a tiny smoker. Smokers are generally very, very large. So we're just going to have to see how this thing goes. All right, now we've got the wings done like this. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my hands off. No, I'm not going to wash my hands off. I'm going to bring the camera over here. And we're going to put the wings on. Then I'll wash my hands off. <laughs> All right. So let's see what this does. Put another little piece of wood in here. Yeah, and I see the water starting to boil, so that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do, let's see. I wonder if I should, I don't know. Let me, do, I'll just put them on by hand. If I've got wings left over, I'll just put them in the refrigerator. So I guess this is also kind of a steaming process too. Put on as many as I can. I think that's about the gist of as big as I'm going to get it. Let's see. Really needed a rag. I wipe my hands off on the grass right here. All right, so let's put this back on. <sighs> Scoot it over, and we're gonna put some more wood on the fire. Maybe those wings will be good for uh, round two. All right, so I'm gonna put more wings on the fire, and I got one pinky clean to cut the camera off. <laughs> You can see the flames now licking the bottom of that, and it's slowly burning off all that water. And you can see some of the steam coming out over on that side over there. So what I'm going to do now is, when the steam sound is gone, then you'll be able to hear the smoke, the chips, starting to burn and starting to smoke. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera back on, like, say, every 10, 15 minutes as I'm adding wood. And uh, maybe... I can catch the process of how the smoke slowly forms. 
which would be pretty cool. That's kind of the beauty of the legs. Let me see, how am I doing that right there? The legs of those, uh, the, the smoker, it being welding rods, they're stainless steel. And you can just stack wood inside in different directions. And those rods can take the heat. And it holds the wood directly under the smoker really nice. I've, I've never had one of those rods uh, fracture, bend, melt, or fail. Now if you look very carefully, I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't even know, I don't know if I can zoom in or not. But around the edges here, you can start to see smoke coming out because there's there's the fire, the smoke from the fire, and then there's the smoke coming around from the edges right here. And there was a wolf of it right there. There's more on the back side back there. But that means all the water's burn off, and now the actual wood smoking chips are burning in place. All right, while that thing's going, I'm gonna set up this little table right here. This little table. It's just a piece of, uh, I think this is polycarbonate, kind of like Lexan. It's got four holes in it. And this was going to be the, the frame. I had a medium Alice pack, and this was going to be the uh, the frame for it. I took the frame out. This is going to be part of it where it slides in the back and stiffens up the pack, but I never got around to finishing it. But the way this thing works is you just saw, or you, you can just carry it in a pack. You just notch out four little legs and kind of curve them until they fit in. So let's see how this works. Just slide it in. And uh, just friction is what holds it. So let's set this up over here. Is that still on the camera? Yep. Let's see. Put that leg in there. Put that leg in there. Yeah. See, that's a that's a neat backpacker table. I, I showed it in another video one time. You know, that way you just keep your stuff on it. Isn't that cool? All right, let's put a little bit more wood on here. Better put on a glove while I have it. As soon as that smoke really starts pouring out, I cut the camera back on. It's kind of starting to pour out now. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. I see that's smoke from the fire because I just put the wood on. But right around that rim, once them chips start getting good and dry out, it's just going to pour smoke out. All now, I do prefer always doing these videos out in the woods, out in the wilderness, out in the wild. But, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes filming at home has its advantages. <laughs> Once you hear the water, once you hear the water no longer steaming, about an hour of smoking should do it. So about another half hour of these things should be done. In the meantime, I get to just sit, sit and drink coffee and watch the cats play. <laughs> I've been monitoring this thing, and as if you'll see, right around this corner, right here, and especially right there, if you'll look very, very carefully, you can see the smoke starting to come out, okay? 
and there's some coming out right here. Now, obviously, what I have discovered from this first-time experiment, it's taken a while and a lot of wood to get to this point. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to pour off more of the water so I have more smoking, less steaming. But it's obvious it's starting to pour out now. So at this point, if these were uh, thighs or legs, I would need more smoking time because they're bigger and thicker. But the fact that these are wings, then I'm thinking as soon as I see the smoke pouring out, I'm going to count down from here out. 30 minutes and if the smoke is pouring out around these edges I can promise you this dome is filled with smoke and these wings are gonna have some pecan smoked goodness <laughs> and I can't wait to eat them they're gonna be so good smoking good smoky wings it's just billowing out around the sides I'm watching this thing and I'm seeing more smoke come out around this edge all the way around this edge and that's making me very very happy now there's not a whole lot of smoke coming out that could be good could be bad but this thing's been smoking long enough that i guarantee you this is full of hot smoke and you gotta let some smoke escape so that more smoke will form now in 10 minutes i'm gonna pull this lid off and take a peek and see how these uh, wings are looking and i may if there's plenty of chips left i may just throw those other wings on See, that way I'll have something to bring to work to eat. <laughs> Make my coworkers jealous. A lot of you may already know this, but a lot of times if you have a fire and you want to stoke it and get it really going, but you don't want to blow on it, you can't get too close to it, some people will bring like a straw, but that just doesn't put a massive amount of air in it. You can't just grab you a plate. And as you can see, that's like turbocharging a fire. <laughs> now I did that because the smoke wasn't billowing out like it should have been. And I'm trying to get everything out of this I can. And like I said, at 11 o'clock, I'm gonna pull that lid off and take a look. And I believe it's gonna be after this fire dies down. Alrighty, it is 11 o'clock. So I'm gonna pull these suckers off and let's, let's see how they look. Oh, those look so good. Hey, and I still got some wood chips left. Man, they smell so good. For now, I'm just going to pull one off and let it cool. Let's grab one of these. That looks so good. I'm going to set this over here and let it cool for a minute. And I'm just going to put the lid back on. Because I've got plenty of wood chips left inside there. Let's see if I can get you over here to look. See down in the bottom, the wood chips down in the bottom? So I think I'm going to throw the rest of the wings on. I'll let them cook while I'm snacking around. So let's put this lid back on. Let that smoke a little bit longer. Let this cool and then I shall chow down. Let it cool just a little bit. smoked now the thing i know i know that this is smoked is because there's no fire directly under these wings there's about this much wood chips underneath the wings so the only thing that cooked these was the hot smoke smoking so let's give this a try it's still it's so hot i can't even hardly touch it mm. <laughs> Oh, man. And it is done through and through. <laughs> I think I figured it out. The second you hear the water stop boiling, from there, one hour. Okay? One hour smoking. That is just unbelievable. Mm. Done through and through. Oh, it's so hot. That is so delicious. I've always bought the hickory chips. <clears throat> and sometimes I've bought, one time I bought the apple chips. I've never bought the pecan chips. 
that's pecan wood. <laughs> I am gonna get the rest of them off. Mmm. Mmm. I'm telling you, this winter when it gets cold, I'm gonna hike up to my favorite mountain where there's no access whatsoever except for hiking. And I'm gonna bring my backpacker smoker and a bunch of wings and I'm gonna kick back and I'm gonna enjoy the cold, I'm gonna enjoy the view, and I'm gonna enjoy my smoked wings. <laughs> oh, these are so good. Oh, man. I hope you had fun. Evidently, this is a success. I love this little smoker. Fantastic. I'm glad I built it. Everything I did about it is just perfect. It just, I, I love it when something works the first time. <laughs> so, uh, have fun. Use your creative mind. Get off the couch. Get out from behind the TV. Even if it's in your backyard, do whatever. Get out and enjoy life and have fun. And most of all, eat well. <laughs> and I shall see you in the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> ten wings is about what you get at a restaurant. Some of the chips didn't get burned up, and some did.